Well, holy cow, this is way overdue, but I'm going to finally show you how we transformed our 1980s uh, style kitchen uh, with no pantry into a, well, it's going to be still a 1980s style kitchen. It's just going to have a, uh, a pantry and also uh, a secret entrance to our basement. So check this out. One of my other videos you might remember that had a stairway down here when we we're finishing the basement, but now it actually has a, uh, a one-touch operated uh, hydraulic assist floor. It operates on 12 volts, and it will work even if the power goes out. And uh, let you come all the way downstairs, back into the game room, which we just finished, and the kids have successfully destroyed. Um, but what I'm going to do in this video is show you everything that I did wrong, things I did right, and I'll go over the different types of uh, the actuators and stuff I used in case you have a space like this and you want to transform it into uh, to something functional like I did. So stay tuned and check this whole thing out. Alright, welcome to our 1980s kitchen with no pantry. This is the best thing we've got going. We've been storing stuff on this shelf. Here's the entrance to the basement. We've been storing shelf there for the last, you know, 10 years. Just piled up and reaching up and grabbing it. So we are going to make floor-to-ceiling shelves, maybe even some cabinetry and some shelves around this perimeter. But in order to do that, we need a floor. So I just mocked up uh, a wooden frame. Um, the actual frame will be made out of metal, uh, out of aluminum. Uh, one by two channel so um, the premise is that there will be a perimeter of trim um, around this hole uh, uh, this this whole length here and then just underneath of this one that's where my hinge will be on um, I have a hydraulic assist probably somewhere in this back corner I have to build out a little support for it but have a hydraulic uh, lift arm and then it will be nice and easy to come to, you know bring down sit there I'll put like a little uh, eyelet or something in here um, to grab onto and make it easy to lift up um, and also I will do a continuation of my railing it will come up underneath and then on the bottom side I will just continue the railing mounted on this piece here so that you get a little grab at the top it also might help bring it down so again this is the mock-up frame I need to run up to Home Depot see if they got some sort of uh, better piano hinges to do this on and then uh, we'll start laying out the aluminum all right, so I reattached the railing, and now I have two. This is going to be my nailer for my hinge. Uh, it's going to go all the way across. I actually was going to originally cut out this um, the drywall here and set it back in. But I figured this is going to be easier in case you know we get to sell it or whatever. We can take this stuff off real easy. Um, and then this is the one that the the bottom platform will rest on. So I just got um, my lengths cut for my aluminum frame. Actually, uh, I gotta get my buddy to come help me weld it, and then we'll uh, we'll put it in place. The one thing I haven't figured quite out, I don't know if I'm gonna go with long piano hinge or uh, like five door hinges. Haven't figured that part out yet, so give me a second, I will. All right, I got these five inch hinges that I'm gonna mock up on one of my uh, cutoffs, and basically I marked it with a pencil in the center and then punched it, and I took a, uh, a 964th bit, to pilot that and then I used a uh, I think it's like a 0.8 by 5 millimeter um, tap and that's what these threads are on the screw that I just misplaced and now it's the screws that came with these so these hinges are designed to either go in wood or in metal which is nice because they came with the right fitting screws and they thread right in so um, I'm gonna do the rest of these and then mock this hinge up against the uh, the frame that's already mounted on the wall and make sure I got you know the right clearance and everything. All right, so this represents my mocked up floor. This will be the frame. It's mounted to the back. That's where the machine screws are. And then this part under here, I'm trying to lighten that up a little bit. These will you know just be regular old wood screws uh, going in. But you can see this hinge has got a nice um, bearing built in, so it doesn't um, just drop. I mean, I'm sure it'll drop when it's got all the weight on there, but that's what the hydraulic assist will be for. Uh, I'll have a little gap, but once I have um, you know, my, my flooring on, I'll probably hold it all the way back to that seam and just notch it for each hinge. That way, you know, when it comes up, um, you know, it, it'll sit like this up against the wall. And then I actually have enough room to continue uh, my baseboard all the way across here so when the floor is down the baseboard will sit on top and it'll look uh, relatively 
normal. It looked like a normal four trim. So, all right, we're going to move on to the, the main frame. All right, I just want to be able to lay my hinges out without getting in the way of my cross members. So this is where my beams are going to go um, every 16 inches. So I just got them squared up and marked off. I'll go ahead and lay out my hinges now and have a sip of beer. Well, my uh, brilliance has come to an end. So I, I tried on the, I had, I had an issue on, on one of the practice runs where it stripped out the, the metal. So you kind of see in there, you know, there's not much, uh, you be able to see shit, but there's not much sticking out and there's not much meat. So two of the three have stripped out even with very gentle tapping and very gentle screwing in. So um, I think I'm just going to drill all the way through. I think I'll just go I have to find a flathead screw that make it all the way out and I'll put a nut in here because that'll be hidden. That'll be inside the actual uh, frame. That's you know, up against the wall. So the frame will be out here. So I got to do some more figuring out, but no, nah, at least learn from my mistakes. It's not as easy as like slapping these uh, hinges together. I need more meat in here. So we either, either got to put a piece of wood. I can run a piece of wood through the... Um, table saw so that it fits nice and snug in there and run it the whole length so that the hinges can bite into wood but I think it would be easier just to put a uh, machine screw in a nut that'd probably be stronger anyhow so that's what we're going to do we made pretty quick work of this just uh, some cardboard shims and a couple of uh, clamps keeping everything tight and uh, we were able to get the welds looking pretty good so uh, thanks Jed did a good job on this he said now what now we're done now we post it to YouTube <laughs> My boy Jed just welded this thing up and it looks really good. And he's sad that we're not going to see any of these uh, these joints. Well, but this will be sweet. Basically, this thing is going to flip up when you open up the when you open up the door like that. And then, obviously, when we lower it back down on those hinges, it'll yep, it'll be a really strong frame to walk on. I mean. Shit. Nice job, man. Yeah. All right, so the frame is uh, is in place. <sighs> Put the uh, all the hinges on. Uh, sort of mock it, make sure it had space. Nothing has changed since the original dimensions. Um, the frame only weighs 27 pounds as it is right now. Uh, once it has the plywood and the um, and the laminate, it's probably gonna be closer to 150 pounds. Um, so back here in this end. I'll have to weld on an ear either here or here uh, to support a um, hydraulic assist lift like you have on the, the trunk of your car or the hood. So um, it doesn't smash anybody. I mean, it, it, this thing is pretty darn solid. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the plywood on it right now and uh, see how it feels walking across. Not too shabby. I just needed a little break from the uh, mechanical engineering. So I got my paint on and got these things coated up, primed and painted and ready to use sooner than later. They turned out pretty good for just some uh, finished gray plywood. All right, so I'm ready to try and fit my piston uh, on the door. And I ordered these mounts off of Amazon. They're much smaller than I thought they would be. Um... So I asked my buddy Jed to see if he can find some scraps, make me some bigger ones. But the biggest problem is when you you know when you uh, snap these in, the way this is designed, the the things on the outside, the the studs on the outside. So when you push, when it's got force, it's going to just automatically tend to try to pull up those screws, those bolts. So um, what I want to do is I'm going to drill this out. I'm going to grind uh, like I did this one. I'm going to grind the stud out off of it. And then I'm going to flip it around and have the stud on this side. And it should, that force should, um, you know, just push this mount right back into the, the surface it's mounted to. So I'm just going to grind this thing off real quick and then knock it out. I think I got to step it up one size uh, with the drill bit. That's about it, but it's pretty easy. <laughs> Yeah, I got a 
another punch. Try and there it is. I'm just off slightly. There we go. So I just need to drill this out about a sixteenth. So I think the new studs don't. All right. So now they will go like this. And then this this will mount on. And yeah, that's much better because once that's locked in, I mean I'm pushing pretty darn hard and it's not flipping or anything. So that's exactly what I want. I just gotta find a nut and a washer. We'll be back in business and we'll have, I don't know, we're gonna try to see if this thing actually works. Well, Houston, we've got a problem because I guess I should have taken an engineering course or two. So this is um, it's not going to work. So I try to pull one. I try to pull this down, and it's just it's too much weight still. So the too much psi for sure. I think it could be mitigated if I had if I had this down lower. I may try that. I may try to just move it down. But the problem is, I, I actually cranked on this thing to close it. Oh, and it starts to come down, but I've run out of piston. So it hits <laughs> before I'm closed. So that sucks. I don't know how to measure that. Oh, and I'm going to let this go and it's going to fly up. It's got too much pressure on it. Oh. So back to the drawing board. So this thing has been a complete pain in the butt. Uh, right, this, I'm just trying to rig this up for distance, but basically I had it mounted over to this side. So the piston ran long ways. Um, it didn't have enough lift force and then it just wanted to slam it at the very top. Um, so I moved it and it took a couple times to get a pretty close angle. Um, I'll actually make a piece of aluminum. I think I'll move it over here right in line with a um, Right in line with the joy or with the uh, wall stud, but in the back of this, uh, essentially, I just I've got it reinforced right now, um, and it's pretty solid. The best part is it actually freaking works. So very light pressure on it, and um, it doesn't slam, and it's pretty easy to lift up. It's got a you know, little weight to it, but right about here, it's it's almost weightless. As you get it, it'll almost hold itself at an angle, and then we'll just slowly go back. Ah, I left the handle handle out, but it goes back and holds itself. So, pretty stoked with it, and we can start using this thing. I'll uh. Once I get the bracket on, I'll do one last, one last showing. Trap door. Well, when I started this thing, which now been months ago, uh, I was like, it's going to be a cool project. I was excited about it. I'm no longer excited about it. It's a complete pain in the ass. Um, I have changed. I have bought different uh, hydraulic assist, different lengths uh different pressures and i still can't find the perfect um combination i have made some uh some nice i'll show you here some, some nice brackets again my buddy jed give me some aluminum so basically created these brackets and they've got holes drilled equal distance between uh the top the top bracket and the bottom bracket so i can actually move this um up and increments to try to get different resistance, different angles on it. Uh, this won't be the same case. Um, I'm still using blocks temporary here, but I do have a piece of aluminum I'll use in this corner. And I'll show you, it's relatively easy to shut. Doesn't take much pressure. Um, you know, it's gonna be functional, which is great. It's gonna be a great 
uh, pantry area for us that we don't have. And I'll probably put a big canned dispenser here for our soups and canned goods and stuff. But Sarah's still there. My wife still thinks that the, uh, you know, it's a little too much to lift. I'd say it's a lot of it is the resistance of the pistons themselves. You know, you get to this point, it gets in that, that last um, bit of the stroke that's designed to dampen. So you have to kind of force it back. But what I think this means I'm going to do is put an electric actuator on that back one. I'm going to pull that one off. Right now, these are two 60-pound uh, struts. I think I'm going to use a 100-pound electric actuator that moves at about um, two inches per second. I think that's going to be enough to open this, and I can do it on a remote switch. And it's 12 volt. I will tie it into my battery bank that I have in the basement. So, to be continued here in a minute. But that's the uh, the next step. Oh my gosh, this is taking me forever. But check this out. Same thing up here, one touch. All right, so quick recap, end up using aluminum bracings tied into the studs. Um, I showed you how I did this whole frame. This is a 40-pound uh, a strut with a 100-pound 12-volt um, actuator. It actually has a couple different options, but I chose the option with the wireless key fobs. Um, I can take it down pretty easily if I want to service it. It just has uh, the pins on both you know, top and bottom. And uh, this one's kind of kind of rigged up, but it still works um, pretty pretty silent. And it drills through, went through the other side to power it. Here's my remote, um, all the other additional wiring, some fuses, but it's all tied into a battery bank that I have down here in the basement, um, which will run for about a day, somewhere around 12 to 24 hours, with uh, some of the electronics and uh, refrigerator stuff I have hooked up into it. But yeah, so if the power goes out, um, this automatically kicks on and I will not lose the ability to open uh, or close this basement door. So I'll put some links in the description to some of the um, components that I used. Uh, Progressive Automations, I think, is where I got this from. So uh, they were great, great people. Um, I sent them a couple questions and... Uh, end up using like a, a shutoff switch to make sure I protect the motor. All sorts of little things like that that are really helpful. Um, but all in all, pretty impressed with myself. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm impressed in how this turned out. Um, I still have a little, a few little things, adjustments maybe to clean up, but uh, all in all, this is gonna be a really functional space for us. This used to be just dead air, dead space, um, and we didn't have any place to put all this stuff except for downstairs, so. I'll be happy to answer your questions. If, you, uh, if you're thinking about doing a project like this, I can certainly elaborate on some of the things that went wrong for me and uh, lessons learned. So thanks for watching.